imagine with me for a moment. Jesus riding on a donkey. Can you picture it in your mind? Can you see it? How many of you have ever seen someone ride on a donkey? Good call. There's like less than 1% or 5% of the world's populations of donkeys live in the United States or live in America. So it might even be hard for us to even understand what that would look like, right? I actually remember from my youth, one of the big things in the neighborhood where I grew up was um, donkey basketball. Have any of you ever heard of this before? Right? Where they ride on donkeys and play basketball. If you've never ridden a donkey, first of all, you don't know how hard it is to ride a donkey, let alone then try to make the donkey go where you want it to go while you're trying to play basketball. Right? It's actually quite humorous to watch a group of grown men sitting on these little animals trying to make them go places that they don't have any desire to go at all. But we imagine this Jesus coming in to the, to the town of Jerusalem on this day, and it's a beautiful, wonderful, majestic thing, right? He's riding this, this beautiful white donkey with this trailing mane, right? You can see it, right? And all these people standing around with their palm branches, waving them, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, right? That's how it happened, right? No, not actually. Not hardly at all. Um, but we imagine things that way, right? Can you imagine your life happening any way than it's happened all the ways that it's happened up to this point in your life? It's easier for the younger members of our congregation to have hope for the future. But as we get older, right, things always happen the same way. Right? Isn't that true? You, you remember your childhood, you remember your life, and you, and you live your life in such a way that the things are always going to continue to happen the way that, they, that they've always happened. It's hard for us to imagine something different than we know. But here's the kicker to that. The kicker to Jesus coming into Jerusalem on this morning, riding this animal that probably wasn't even tall enough for him to not be able to have his feet dragging the ground. Right? It's not some big majestic animal that Jesus is riding on like a, like a heralded king. It's an animal that he probably has to help push along with his feet, walking on the ground, walking like this, on top of this animal. Right? The kicker to all of this is the life that we've imagined and the life that we live or we remember is just that. It's our view of the story. It's interpreted through our lens. Our history is interpreted through the lens in which we see it. Our history or our imagined life is the life that we've lived, that we've told ourselves is what happened. How many of you have known people who have lived with siblings in a family that has had some kind of abuse or some kind of traumatic event happening? Like you have two brothers or two sisters or a brother and a sister who grew up with an alcoholic parent and you ask them about their life before and you, you talk to them individually and each one of them gives you a completely separate view of how their life was before. But both of them had each of the similar same events happen to them. But because of the way that they've interpreted or the way that they've allowed it to be viewed by them has changed their way and it sent them off into two completely different paths in the future. They had the same life. They grew up in the same place. But the way that they allowed the people to help them view their life was different. You see, these people heralding Jesus into the city of Jerusalem this morning were shouting, Hosanna! And what does Hosanna mean? Anyone? Does anyone know what Hosanna means? Other than just a fancy word that we shout in church? Do you know? Nope. Hosanna means save us. Save us. Right? We get these branches of palms. Notice, you go back later and read your reading for this morning, the gospel reading for this morning, how the gospel of Mark says that they threw their cloaks and branches they cut from the field. It doesn't say palms. The only gospel that, there's only one gospel that mentions palms, I believe it's John. 
There's branches from the field. There's cloaks. Sometimes there's nothing. The palms come from Maccabees, which is a, an Old Testament apocryphal book where they talk about the heralding of the city of Jerusalem and the city of Jerusalem being set free from a captive in a siege. And Matthew, and we get the donkey from Matthew and John quoting Zechariah 9.9, where Jesus, the heralded king, the heralded Messiah to come, is going to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey and set us free. It's a military victory. These people are imagining this victory that's going to come to set them free from slavery, from the bondage of Rome that holds them in place. And what are they going to get at the end of the week? In their minds, utter failure. Because their king is going to hang on a cross. See, that's the kicker this week. This week is not about us. It's not about us. It's not about what we want. It's not about what we think we deserve. It's not about what we think we need to have or who we think we need to be. It's all about God. And it's all about Jesus. And it's all about the fact that even though we can't imagine this week going as dark as it did, but in God's eyes it's the right thing to do. And it's the wonderful way that brings each and every one of us back to Him. If we can only let go of the lives that we think we have and lay everything at the foot of the cross and look through the eyes of Jesus, and see things through the eyes of God as He looks on us and calls us His precious, wonderful children in whom I am well pleased. And know that the life that He has imagined for us is the life that is truly the life we should be living. Not what we think we should have, but what God wants for us. So I invite you this Holy Week as we herald the coming King as we already know the outcome, to imagine this week through the eyes of God, to imagine Monday, Thursday through the eyes of a Savior who breaks bread the last time with his friends and passes it around the table, knowing that one of them is about to hand him over to one of the most cruelest forms of punishment known to man. And then a man who goes to that cruelest form of punishment because he loves you so much, and then walks out of the tomb to give you a life beyond any comparable imagination. So walk this week with Jesus as he goes to the cross to die for you, to rise again to allow you to be with God forever and see your life through his eyes and know it's beyond anything you could ever possibly